All right, in this video, I'm going to do one more example of solving a rational inequality. So in this case, we're going to try to solve 2 over 5x plus 1 greater than 4 over x plus 1. So again, the first thing I do is make one side 0. And I'm going to do that by subtracting the 4 over x plus 1 from both sides. And that's still greater than 0. So again, at this point, what I have to do, I want to write the left side as a single fraction. Um, well, the only way to do that is to get common denominators. So I've got 5x plus 1 um, minus 4 over x plus 1. So again, to get common denominators, I would have to multiply the top and bottom, uh, the numerator and denominator of the first fraction by this quantity x plus 1. And then for the second fraction, well, his denominator, which what is it missing? It's missing the 5x plus 1. So in order to make that denominator appear, we would simply multiply top and bottom by 5x plus 1. Again, we want that to be greater than 0. So again, when you simplify fractions, the denominator um, stays the same, at least when we're adding and subtracting. And all the arithmetic occurs in the numerator. So we have 2 times this quantity x plus 1. I'm going to write minus 4 times the quantity 5x plus 1. OK, greater than 0. And now I'm going to simplify the numerator here. Uh, you can check my arithmetic. We would have 2 times x. And over here, we would have a negative 4 times 5x. So to me, that's 2x minus 20x, which would give us a negative 18x. And then we have 2 times positive 1, which is positive 2. Positive 2, it looks like we would get a negative 4. So 2 minus 4 is going to give us negative 2. And then we have our denominator here of x plus 1 times uh, the quantity 5x plus 1. And again, we want this to be greater than 0. So you know, if you didn't like the negatives in the numerator, you could divide by the negative or you know, do what you want to. Um, I'm going to just kind of leave it as it is. Just write it down here one more time. And again, what we have to do now that we have the left side as a single fraction is we're going to take the denominator, set that equal to 0, and solve. And we're going to take the denominator, set that equal to 0, and solve. So we have negative 18x minus 2 equals 0. And then we also have x plus 1 times 5x plus 1 equals 0. So I'm just setting the numerator and denominator both equal to 0. So if I solve the first equation, I'll get negative 18x equals positive 2. If I divide both sides by negative 18, I'm going to get x equals negative 1 over 9 as one of my solutions. And again, this is what makes the numerator 0. And again, I don't multiply out the denominators because if I did, I would have to turn around and factor them to solve this equation. So by leaving them not multiplied, I'm kind of saving myself a step. So we can get rid of the parentheses. So we can just say x plus 1 has to be 0. 5x plus 1 would have to be 0. So it looks like a solution to the first one. If we subtract 1, we'll get x equals negative 1. And from our second one, if we subtract 1 and divide by 5, it looks like we'll get x equals negative 1 fifth. All right, so kind of some, again, you know, maybe the, not, not the most user-friendly numbers here. Um, so let's see, I think negative 1 would be the furthest to the left on our number line. And then negative 1 fifth would come next. And then negative 1 ninth, uh, since he's even closer to 0, would come last. OK, so again, the first thing I do is I test each one of these numbers. Um, again, negative 1 produces 0 in the denominator. That can't work. Negative 1 fifth produces 0 in the denominator. Dividing by 0 is undefined, so that can't satisfy the inequality either. And negative 1 ninth, that's going to give me 0 in the numerator, not in the de denominator. Well, 0 over some number is 0, but 0 is not greater than 0, so that one doesn't work either. All right, so um, let's see if we can't come up with some values here to use. So we've got x equals um, negative 1. We have to take something smaller than that, so maybe we can test x equals negative 2. 
negative 1.5, that's really the number negative uh, 0.2 if you think about that as being a decimal. Um, so let's see, we need something between negative 1 and negative 0.2. Maybe I'll use negative 1 half or negative equivalently negative 0.5. Um, let's see, a number between negative uh, one-fifth and negative one over nine. Um, let's see, I think a number that we could use here, this is roughly equal to, well it is exactly equal to negative point one repeating, so one, 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 one forever. So maybe we can use negative point one five, that would fall inside of there. And then anything bigger than negative one-ninth, how about we use x equals zero. Okay, so again, sometimes these are the breaks. You don't always get nice, whole, you know, simple numbers to work with. So, so let's see, again, we had negative 18x minus 2 over x plus 1 times 5x plus 1. Again, we want that to be greater than 0. So let's see, I guess let's just start testing our numbers here. So if I test x equals negative 2, Let's see, so in the numerator, we have negative 18 times negative 2 minus 2. We would have negative 2 plus 1, and then we would have 5 times negative 2 uh, plus 1. And again, is that greater than 0? Well, in the numerator, we have negative 8 and negative 2. That's positive 36. 36 minus 2 is 34. Uh, negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 1. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, plus 1 is negative 9. We have two negatives on the bottom, which makes for a positive. So really we have 34 over positive 9. And since 34 over positive 9 is certainly greater than 0, it, that's going to be a solution. And so anything smaller than negative 1 will be a solution. Let's try um, x equals negative 1 half next. So if we do that, we'll get negative 18 times negative 1 half minus 2. In the denominator, we have negative 1 half plus 1. Um, we'll have 5 times negative 1 half plus 1. Again, is that greater than 0 is what I'm trying to determine. So we've got negative 18 times negative 1 half, which is positive 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. Uh, we have 5 times negative 1 half, which is negative 5 halves, uh, plus 1. And again, to me now, the way I think about it without doing all the arithmetic, 7 is certainly a positive number, 1 half is certainly a positive number. Negative 5 halves is what? Negative 2.5, so plus 1, that would still be a negative number. So on top I have a positive, on the bottom I have a negative, a negative, excuse me, a positive over a negative is a negative number. And since negative numbers are not greater than zero, that means that negative one, one half will not be a solution. So nothing in between works. And again, you can check, uh, you know, do all the arithmetic to verify it for sure. Um, but again, just kind of maybe a little time saver. Um, because again, really you don't need to know exact values, just kind of the, the signs associated. So, okay, x equals negative 0.15. All right, so we're having fun here. Um, let's see, again, our inequality we're trying to satisfy here is our uh, negative 18x minus 2 over x plus 1, 5x plus 1. So if we plug that in, we'll get uh, negative 18 times negative 0.15 minus 2. Uh, we've got negative 0.15 plus 1. And then 5 times negative 0.15 plus 1. Again, is that greater than 0? So let's see if we can't do the arithmetic here. Um, you know, probably I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, cheat here a little bit and use a calculator. So 18 times uh, 0.15, actually that shouldn't be too bad, uh, 2.7. So I'm getting positive 2.7 minus 2 in the numerator. Let's see, negative 0.15 plus 1, that's 1 minus 0.15, that's 0.85. 5 times negative 0.15 is going to be negative 0.75, again, plus 1. We're trying to figure out, is that greater than 0? Well, 
2.7 minus 2 is positive 0.7 in the numerator. We have positive 0.85. Uh, negative 0.75 plus 1 is positive 0.25. That's a positive over a positive, which is definitely a positive. And hey, that is greater than 0. So it says negative 0.15 works. So that means everything in between that, inter in that interval will, will work. And last but not least, okay, at least we kind of have an easy one to check now. I think we said we would check x equals 0 in this, uh, again, this, this inequality. So if we plug in x equals 0, what are we going to get? Well, in the numerator, I think we're just going to be left with negative 2. In the denominator, we're going to have a positive 1 in the first set of parentheses. And it looks like we're going to have a positive 1 in the second set of parentheses. So really, we're getting uh, negative 2 over positive 1, which is negative 2. Is that greater than 0? Definitely not. So since 0 doesn't work, it implies on our original number line that nothing bigger than 0 works. So finally, we're in a position to write our solution in interval notation. Let's see. So you can think about this as being from, again, negative infinity all the way out there on the left. So our solution here in interval notation to describe this interval, uh, we would say it's from negative infinity up to negative 1, but not including it. So we'll use parentheses. Or we can go from negative 1 fifth up to negative 1 ninth, again, not including those values. So again, as you can see, these problems are pretty, uh, you know, definitely pretty long and tedious. Unfortunately, with inequalities, this is just kind of the, uh, you know, the nature of the beast. So, um, you know, notice a lot of the intervals have kind of been uh, flip-flopping. Be careful to make any kind of uh, broad generalizations there. Um, so just one other uh, little remark there. But again, other than that, it's just solving them um, and just testing points and being careful with the arithmetic.